I'll be honest, I used to avoid debugging. Not because I didn't want to, but because I didn't really know how to. Instead, I relied on the good old print statements, adding them all over my code, and then trying to figure out what's going on by reading what they print to the terminal. I would check the output, guess if it looked right, and really hope for the best. So if that sounds like you, you'll love this video as I show you how to debug in Python using VS Code. Now, this video is short, but it's packed with everything you need to know to get started with debugging, like how to add breakpoints or the way cooler one, expression breakpoints and way more. I'm gonna cover everything you need to know to learn how to debug in Python using VS Code. If you're new to the channel, I'm Eric Roby, a software engineer with over a decade of experience, and I've helped thousands of developers Developers learn and grow within their craft. Now, before we dive into code, please hit that subscribe button as it helps me tremendously. All right, so let's dive into code. All right, so here we're going to go over a code example of how you can use the debugger in your Visual Studio code to be able to debug Python applications. And this is like something that I've noticed that a lot of people don't know is possible and it's super helpful. But all you need is go into your extensions. If you go into your extensions and you download Python inside here, you'll see that there is something called a Python debugger on top of just like the normal Python. You're going to make sure that you have Python, but there's also something called Python debugger. Make sure you have that installed. Once you have that installed, you can come over here and click this little button. This is the run and debug button in Visual Studio, and you can click run and debug. But what we're going to be debugging is a small calculator app that can only add and divide. I know it doesn't really make sense, but it was needed for this video. So we have calculator.py, which is just add two numbers, return the result, and then divide, which is just return to divide. Not sure why I made a variable here, but not here, but you get the point. And then in main.py, we're able to just pass in a value right here. If it says divide, well, then we're going to divide the solution. If it is sum, then we're just going to add the numbers. So to start, let's go ahead and just type in sum so I can kind of show you what's going on. If we go into our terminal and I say python3 main.py, we can see that this will go on forever. We can just keep running the application and we'll just keep getting different solutions. However, if we change this to divide and we start running the application, it'll work, but it'll also break. And we might be wondering why and we might want to dive in. So what we can do here is if we come over to our debug, we can say run and debug. Now, the first time you click this, it's gonna ask you what debugger you want to use. Here, I'm just gonna select Python debugger. Now, inside the debug configuration, you can select quite a bit of different configurations. You can select just a specific file, which we're gonna be doing in this video. You can do a file with specific arguments, a module we can remote attach, but then there's also four big ones. This happens to have Django, FastAPI, Flask, and Pyramid. So this is also how I would debug a FastAPI application if I'm running into some kind of error that I'm not familiar with. But let's go ahead and just say Python file. So that it ran, it actually ran perfectly and it didn't catch any bugs because we haven't added something called a breakpoint. Now a breakpoint is, if you come over here, you can see the red dot start appearing if you go to the left of the line. And what we can do here is select and drop a breakpoint. Now if we click run and debug, it's going to stop the application on the breakpoint. And we can see that it stopped on the value param that's equal to sum. And that's because one, I added the condition here, but we can see that the value param is actually divide over here on the variables list. We can see that A is 10, B is already zero, and the value param that we're passing in is divide. So this condition is going to be false. Now, there's a couple buttons up here we can click. The first one is just the play button. So it's just going to run the application as if nothing was happening. So if we click this, we can see that it's going to stop in the middle of the application because we were able to catch a bug. Something broke our application. And that's because we're trying to divide by zero, but I'm trying to walk through the example here. Now, if we're like, oh crap, the application broke, you can click this red button and the application just ends. So let's rerun it, our Python debugger. Oh wait, gotta go to our main.py. And here we can see that it caught, again, our value param, where our value param is still divide. And then this button says step over. 
So because this is going to be false, it's going to step over this line and go to the next executable line. So we're stepping over to the next executable line, which is this if statement right here. And we do know that the value param is divide. So what we can do is say step over, which will go to the next executable line. And now we're on the next executable line. Now, the next thing that we can do is this is called the step into button. And what we're going to do is if we select the step over, it's going to go to the next executable line on this file. If we click step into, it's going to step into the function that is getting called on this executable line. So we have value equals divide numbers A and B. If we say step into, it's going to step into whatever is happening here. So we can say step into, and all of a sudden it went to the divide numbers. And now we have like our own line by line executable debugger in that file now. So now it's gonna say, hey, we're returning X and Y. Here we can say, okay, we wanna step out, which means we go right back to the executable line that we stepped into. We can step over see what it's about to print, which is dividing A and B to get a value. Well, we know that A is going to be 10, B is going to be one, and the value is 10. So it has, so it keeps track of all the active values over here on the left-hand side. So if we go ahead and just say play, everything is going to work correctly. But let's see if we can get it to another spot where B is equal to zero. There we go. So here we know that this is going to fail inside here. So if we step into it and then we go inside, we're like, hey, let's step inside, divide. We might be suspicious about this line of code and be like, I wonder if this is what's causing the error. So we can see that 10 divided by Y is possibility of causing this error. So what we can do here is change the value of Y to something to see if this catches the error. But first, let's just make sure that the application breaks after keeping this a, a zero. So we can just go through it, boom. Wow, we got an error right here. We can't divide by zero. So we can say, okay, Let's come back to here, add a breakpoint, but this time let's right click and say edit breakpoint. We want to stop here only when a expression happens. This expression is gonna be y equals zero. So this is the expression. Stop here when y is equal to zero. So what we can do here is just say run and debug. Okay, it, nothing got caught because y wasn't zero. We got 10 divided by one run and debug, and it caught it now where y is equal to zero. We already have this suspicion, right, that maybe the error is happening here. So what we can do is literally change the value over here to two to see if that causes the error. If we now run the application, we're like, oh, wow, it worked. <laughs> now, it does believe that this is still zero because it was a separate application. So we can just change this to two as well because that's what it would be returning, but it doesn't know that we just changed the value on the other side. And now if we run the application, we can see that we get dividing 10 and two equals five. So we're like, oh, maybe that's where the error is occurring. So we can come over here and say, if y is uh, equal to zero, so this is pretty much how you can debug. I showed you how you can use breakpoints, step around, and then use the expression, which is super helpful in a lot of different areas of debugging. So this was a quick video, and I wanted to just kind of show you how to use the debugger. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next.